subject matter jurisdiction. So in three quite detailed and quite technical uh, clauses, we destroy their personal jurisdiction, their territorial jurisdiction, and their subject matter jurisdiction. And the fourth is making it clear. As we hereby give proper notice and assert our irrevocable sacred rights, you acknowledge you shall immediately dismiss all controversies, charges, cases, claims, liens, taxes, duties, encumbrances, levies, orders, or similar with extreme prejudice, expunging any and all records. The seat of this deed poll is your acknowledgement and acceptance. So that is all for you. So that's there for you to help you, providing you are standing up and being competent and asserting your rights and reading and thinking very carefully what you're doing, but standing in honour. Here is a tool for you. Sorry it took a while to get to it, but here it is for you now. Okay. Now I'd like to talk about another um, tool that's been provided to you, uh, one of history. And I'm going to click back on home page to get back to the home of uh, one-heaven.org. And I'm going to click on the covenant, which is that book on the left there with that kind of goldy image of water in the sky. And I'm going to go to Article 44 of the covenant, which says Promised Land Record. Now, this is something I've spoken about before, but I have not made it clear before. And it's something I think that is long, long overdue. And it is part of, and will be part of, a central part of, helping you save your home. There are going to be two remedies provided from the homepage by this week on how to help you save your home. The first is based on redeeming your position as a delinquent tenant that has not paid interest, interest being the, uh, the rent, and the second is your right to claim land, the possession of land, for the purpose of a primary domicile. So I want to cover this part now because I have discussed in the past some of the remedy associated with restoring your position as being a delinquent tenant. And this is at the heart of uh, establishing your rights. So I'm going to read some of these things, these, these paragraphs, and then explain I hope you don't mind if I read. So I'm on Article 44 of the Covenant under one-heaven.org. Article 44, Promised Land. All living members of one heaven who are aged 21 years on the day of divine agreement and understanding or upon reaching the same age thereafter who are not formally excluded by ancient covenant of the divine creator have the absolute right to request a valid abstract of their promised land record for the purpose of proof of their divine right of possession of land for the purpose of a primary domicile. Promised land is a form of secure promise and is the most sacred, formal and important of all types of promises. It represents the fulfillment of an ancient sacred pledge by the divine creator that all men and women who redeem themselves in recognition of their membership to one heaven and Eucadia may lawfully assert their divine right and own their home in trust upon the provision of a valid certificate of vacant possession and entitlement and then a certificate of survey and title. Then it goes on to say, a promised land record is available only to those naturally born or naturalised for a particular national free society. Residents cannot apply for a promised land record in a free society in which they live unless they are naturalised members of that society. So there's some technical with it, but I want to deal with the big picture. It was promised thousands of years ago and it was encumbered upon the leadership of that time to see that the divine promise of the promised land would be fulfilled. And what that involved was it involved the demonstration uh, of honouring that proof of right that we are not slaves, that we may uh, own title of our primary domicile 
and that we may have that right protected. Now this is not the only generation today that have failed to meet that. But as a moment of history and as a moment of proof to you and of proof to all that may hear this call and may read this covenant, the promised land record is the fulfillment of that ancient promise as true. It is not a trick. It is not a gimmick. It is a very serious symbol and sign so that no one can mistake the author, the origin of these promises and words because we were promises. Now, there's only one group who is excluded and I will, I'll explain that. And again, this is not because I want to exclude them. I don't. I don't want to exclude anybody. I'm here, as I say, for 10 months and then it will be up to you and those that come after you and those that listen to the call to use these tools to make this work or to see it not work. But there is one group by their own choice who have excluded themselves, and it's 44.2. I'm going to read these three paragraphs out and then I'll explain. Excluded members not entitled to promised land record. In accordance and fulfilment of the ancient covenant and promise of the divine creator, as well as the lord of the Khazar Venetian nobility, Promised land and therefore a promised land record is forbidden to be granted to anyone who mistakenly calls themselves by the 16th century false term Jew instead of Israelite, Yahudi or Hebrew. The term Jew comes from the corruption of the word goy, gu and goyim. The corruption took place under the false Israelites and false Yahudi known variously as the Venetians, the Zionists, and the Khazars. These are people from uh, Khazaria. These are people from the uh, Caucasus Mountains. These are people from southern Mongolia. These are not Semitic people. These are not Semitic people. This is not an anti-Semitic statement because these people are not Semitic. They are usurpers. They are land robbers. As the term of the covenant within the Old Testament with the divine creator and the covenant of the Talmud of the Menezhe with their Lord Moloch, also known as Sabaoth and Satan, expressly claimed the promised land to the Israelites, forbidding the Goy and the Goyim, people who call themselves Jews are therefore forbidden to receive the promised land. They have made this promise, not me. They have made these rules. You are the Israelites. You are the Yahudi. You are the Hebrew. You are those that have been promised and are entitled and now receive that entitlement. But they who claim to rule the world in ignorance and stupidity condemned themselves in their ignorance and stupidity and thought that they could usurp the gods and the dark gods themselves. The rabbi thought they could trick Lucifer, Satan. They really did. And when they destroyed their own covenant in the 30s and then created the United Nations and created the State of Israel and murdered six million Israelite, Yahudi and Hebrew in World War II, yes, they did it. They murdered their, what they would call their own to create a new world, a new world order. They condemn themselves. So they have done this to themselves, not me. Now, when people wake up, and hopefully they will, and no longer follow the clinical insanity of these people and recognise what they are as Israelite, Yahudi, Hebrew, they have absolute right for a promised land record, but not as they currently stand. So that's the only group. Now, the uh, valid issue of promised land record uh, is the condition that they're not excluded um, and that a valid life born record exists. And when it's issued, a, a promised land record is a certificate 
of a true location trust. And that true location trust holds the divine right of possession and use. So it holds incredibly valuable property. Now, if you've heard on free man on the land and a patriot belief on the land and a scriptural belief on the land, where the word sovereign has been used and the word dominion has been used. I'm happy to report that although the word sovereign is merely a title of higher Roman slave, anyone that has professed or believed that there is a God-given right of dominion is correct. We are born with dominion. We are born with the absolute divine right of possession and use of land as a primary domicile in the form of a promised land record. And I hope for those that have been uncertain about Eucadia and not clear how this issue fits in their own belief system, that they may reacquaint themselves with Eucadia and be more open to what we are now saying in making sure that these promises are clear and are true. So there's a long list of things that make a valid promised land record. I won't go through all of those, but they're listed there. And then we have a certificate of vacant possession entitlement. Well, the promised land record is proof that you have a divine right. But you don't have a divine right to simply walk onto the land and kick someone off that land because you want to have that land. No way does a promised land record give you the right to break the law. For you to fulfill your right, it must be lawful in accordance with the oldest laws of the land back to when the land was called the Tara, or where we call it Torah, same thing, Tara, Torah, that it was the law of the land. Tara was the land, Torah was the law from which we get Terra. T-E-R-R-A in uh, Latin. And the law was that vacant possession is the only form of lawful possession of land, vacant possession. If you take land from someone who wasn't uh, under vacant possession, that's not lawful. So there are certain conditions that make vacant possession lawful and entitlement, and we give those options there. One, that a contract of sale was secured with the previous occupants, and so on. And you'll see that those listed there under 44.5. So a certificate of vacant possession is part of proving your perfected claim of right. Now there is another document that is required as well. And it's a certificate of survey and title. So it's one thing to say I possess the land. It's another thing to respect your neighbours and respect your community and ensure that your possession and that your claim is perfected by not crossing and taking your neighbour's land, your neighbour's rights. And that is the purpose of a survey, to make sure that the boundaries between property are clear and that the title is clear. So that you use meets and bounds. And that document, as well as certificate of possession, uh, vacant possession and entitlement will be ready uh, within the week as well. Uh, earlier, for some that I'm helping who are in, in immediate risk of eviction. Now, the only other document that will be there, which I haven't listed at this point, is a deed of right and title. And the deed of right and title is the deed that uh, proves the conveyance and proves the lawful title. Now, what you then do is you then take an extract of their title or mortgage or whatever uh, is used to prove that some title exists because I know that the banks claim the title but you are given at least some document when you start a mortgage that gives some indication of your standing and you surrender that token. So long as you hold a claim of title albeit equitable title, then you agree to their rules. And if you agree to their rules and you agree that they can put you through foreclosure or they can seize your land, they can evict you. But once you symbolically surrender the token, 
as we do with the birth certificate, 